Hey guys, what Bombay TV? Guys, we're going to be reacting to why is there no historical criticism of the Quran as there is of the Bible? <laughs> guys, let me be checking this out and I really don't know who is talking yet, but let me get straight into this. Hello again, and in this episode, uh, I just want to um, explore a bit further um, the Bible and the Quran um, in terms of where they came from and uh, questions of scholarship, critical scholarship, particularly when it's applied to the Bible and the Quran. And the first um, text I want to share with you is back to this one, uh, Quran uh, and the Secular Mind, a Philosophy of Islam by Shabir Ak who I said before was a, was a lecturer in uh, theology at Oxford and um, the second book is uh, this one called Reflections by Guy Eaton this is the last book he wrote before he sadly passed away and um, both um, passages I'm going to read complement each other they are more or less saying the similar kind of thing but with a di different uh, emphasis right they're both of value so um, uh, Shabbat Akhtar starts uh, off um, looking at um, the origins of the Hebrew Bible and the Christian Bible and then compares that with the Quran. And in a similar way, Guy Eden makes uh, an observation as well. So Shabbat Akhtar says, unlike the scriptures of other extant historical religions, the Quran is contemporaneous with the faith it established. The Hebrew Bible and the Christian New Testament, for instance, came to acquire belatedly the status of scripture within their communities. Groups of churchmen, in the case of the Greek New Testament, canonized a set of writings well over three centuries after the events uh, those books and letters allegedly, allegedly record. Actually, for some books, it was much later, but I'm not going to go there. The result is often seen, even by Christians and Jews, as a poorly edited anthology of religious literature. The Quran status is different. It is self-described as revelation, unlike the Bible, and it single-handedly created the community that treated it authoritatively, not the converse. No discipline among the sciences of the Quran corresponds to the critical historical concerns of critical biblical scholarship, a field covering textual criticism as well as form, source, redaction, literary and historical criticism. The Muslim reluctance to develop the discipline of critical Quranic scholarship is mistakenly thought to be connected to religious obscurantism. In fact, there are no materials and no need for such a discipline. The Quran, unlike the Bible, is not the heterogeneous work of many hands in several genres, in a trio of languages, in varied geographical locales, stretching over millennia, surviving only in uncertain and fragmentary forms. It is a unified canon, revealed in just over two decades, addressed to a man fully known to his contemporaries and to subsequent history, a man living in only two geographical locations in the same country. It was written in one language, in the language of the recipient, Arabic obviously, and of the first audience, a living language that is still widely spoken. The period between its oral revelation and final authoritative compilation is only about two decades. Apart from some variant readings that, that do not materially affect the sense, the text is invariant, defined and fixed. Textual emendation editing the text to remove alleged corruptions and errors in copying, was never permitted. The text has retained a perfect purity. A unique version has always enjoyed universal currency during the entire history of Islam. I cannot see, barring motives of malice and envy that should have no place in scholarship, any grounds for developing a critical textual scholarship of the Quran. So that sets up the contrast nicely, I think, from the Muslim point of view between the genesis of the Bible and, and of the Quran and why we can't have uh, the same kinds of textual, critical, historical analysis of the Quran if the Quran's claims are true. Guy Eaton says something uh, similar, and there's another comment he makes which I'll just throw in for good measure, which I think is just rather good. And he says... Uh, 
This leads to two questions which I and other Muslims in the West are frequently asked. Why in the first place is there no historical criticism of the Quran as there is of the Bible? Here we have a simple misunderstanding. The Bible is made up of many different parts compiled over many centuries. It is possible to cast out on one part without impugning the rest. But the Quran is a single revelation received by just one man. Either you accept it for what it claims to be, in which case you are a Muslim, or you reject this claim and so place yourself outside the fold of Islam. So basically he's saying the similar things to uh, Shabit Akhtar. And then he goes on, and this is a different subject but fascinating. Secondly, we are sometimes asked why we hesitate to adapt the Quran to the needs of our modern age. The book answers itself, itself answers this question. There is no changing the words of God. The fact that it was sent down in the 7th century of the Christian era and not the 21st is irrelevant. You do not wear down a diamond by constant handling and the passage of the centuries cannot erode the words of God. That, after all, is the whole point of a divine intervention in the affairs of this world. The act, the revelation, is located in time, but it is itself timeless. And Islamic theology always defines the essence of the Quran as uncreated, therefore eternal. This question is so important in relation to contemporary religious debate that I hope to return to it later in the talk. For the moment, suffice it to say that Muslims, that as Muslims, we ask not how the book can be adapted to our lives in the world of today, but how our daily lives can be adapted to the Quran. That is the real problem, says Guy. Mm -hmm. And this really gets to the heart of many of these debates over specific issues, whether it be sexual morality or how we deal uh, with other religions and so on. The, the, church, the churches typically adapt their scriptures to uh, the needs of today. So they will delete, ignore, overlook um, or reinterpret passages so that it fits in comfortably with the Weltanschauung, the worldview and the spirit of the age, the zeitgeist, uh, usually the Western zeitgeist. Um, whereas the Quran uh, asks, in fact, uh, states as it's the, the eternal word of God, the speech of God himself, uh, it, 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 does, it cannot be changed like that. Uh, there's either submission to the truth of God or one is in rebellion to it. Anyway, I just wanted to share those two passages with you. I think they're they're fascinating. Uh, whether you believe them or not, they they express a, a key insight into the Muslim worldview uh, and, and how their religion works, if you like. Um, and I think it's worth sharing for that reason. Thank you, guys. I we had some video like real soon, and I made this claim. Like I was like, why is why does why does each Muslim think the Bible is false? Like, but this kind of answers itself because based on the fact that they had this knowledge that the Bible had been addicted and it wasn't just given to one man, it was several people who wrote the Bible. I feel, um, me per se, that's why I feel the Bible is authentic because a lot of people wrote it and they're saying the same thing. So, like, it's not just from one source, like, you got it from different sources, and there were a lot of eyewitness. Now, I believe the Bible is real. To be honest, I honestly do. I honestly believe it's the Word of God. I believe it's the Word of God. I have read some parts in the Quran, and I have made some video about the Quran, and I can tell you the Quran actually shocked me because I didn't know that there was a book that can give you something really, really close to the Bible like that. So to be honest, I believe the Quran is the Quran is there. I, I I really can say the Quran is the word of God. Please don't misunderstand me. I'm a Christian, so I believe in one book, the Bible. And I believe that is the word of God. So I, I can say the Quran is the word of God, like the word of God. But I believe that part of the world like the Quran says a lot. Like the Quran talks about Mary, Abraham, like a lot of things. So I honestly, I have this mindset. There are things in the Quran that I personally love. Like I love it. 
Well, guys, do you want to like, subscribe my channel. I'll see you next time, guys. Bye.